Maggie, it's time to LOL. Listen out loud, that is. It's time for Anime Jam Session with DJ Ronma S, Mako-chan, and Ari Rockefeller. I can't hear you, dude. God damn it. I, I blame the weather, okay? I absolutely blame the weather, okay? All right? Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, we had to restart the intro, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Sorry. This podcast has been a production of... Huh? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. VLC just gave me a mild heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> with that one but for those of you who have been following this sh this show for a long time knows that has happened a couple of times before so you know enough about that so Ari just said in our group chat is that it's just it's torrential rain down by him evidently I just missed all of that coming in off the subway as I was stuck on it for about an hour and some change trying to get home yeah while we were waiting for the pre-show to finish I lifted my headset like you know, headphones off for a second because I heard something that wasn't related to the music and it just started coming down in buckets, like yep. splashing against my window real hard. Hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. Give it about another 20 minutes and it'll all go away. <laughs> More than likely. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go ahead and kick things off. Uh, welcome to Anime Jam Session, episode number 640. We are that podcast that talks about anime, games, conventions, the fandom, geek stuff, and everything in between. I'm DJ Ron S. And I'm Ari Rockefeller. Mako-chan is taking a night off, and for those of you who have been fans of the show, understand why she is taking some taking tonight off, and she will be back next week. Uh, we were hoping that Barry would be joining us, but according to her uh, Discord status, she's playing in human or for human or some some game. Um, well, she was playing a game. She just signed off. She just finished that. So maybe she should be heading over this way momentarily. So that'll be some fun stuff. So, anywho, uh, as see the Barry says, what? No, you've always been perfectly professional. Oh, please. <laughs> if I'm the professional, then Rob Roberts and Bobby Blackwolf are masters of the craft. Understand <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, looks like the this though is slightly off. Let me fix something. I don't know if I could do anything. Lightning out there too. It's it, 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 it's okay. It's okay. So I just turned off the low latency, so I'll have to fix it'll. It when when this re restarts, it's fine. I'm not even worrying about it at this point. Maybe I'll tweak the video and see if I can get it to to kind of hit just right. We'll figure it out one way. Not too worried too too much. So anywho, let's get on with the show tonight. Uh, Ari, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Uh, I don't have any pillows to scream into. They're on the other side of the room. Yeah, I feel the same way. Mm. If I can use my hand to do force powers to force my pillows over here to throw it at something, I would. So, we are live tonight, week of July 16th, 2024, right here on Twitch TV. We're here live Tuesdays from, generally from 9 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern. You can always find us at Twitch TV slash anime. We're also probably part of the Voice of Geeks Network at vognetwork.com. You can always find us at vognetwork.com. Um, they're also on uh, Twitch as well, Twitch TV slash vognetwork. They kick things off on Sundays at 8 p.m. with the Bobby Blackwell Show, followed by Orange Lodge Radio at 9. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. I just got a message from Barry. She's And they go, Today is Tuesday, shite. My alarm didn't go up because my phone is dead. Logging in now. Oops. I, to be fair, I understand their pain. I have two alarms for work. 
I have Winamp set as an alarm and my watch as a fallback to go off a minute later. And there are like, and what I do is if I'm not going into work during the week or something like that, I will turn the watch, I'll turn the alarm watch off. Or if I do it for one day, it'll turn it on the next day. I There have been weeks I have gone without having that alarm on and then I wake up and be like, what time? Oh, I should have been out the door like an hour ago. And I, <laughs> that happened to me last Thursday. I didn't get to work till like 11 o'clock. And then I had to read, I had to go back and fix my time sheet so that it showed that I showed up at 11 and not 9. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been an issue. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Barry makes their way to the show. Uh, we're going to continue along here. Um, let's see. Don't forget, we have a Discord, bognetwork.com slash Discord. Every show that's part of the Voice of Geeks Network has a channel, so come through, hang out, and have a good time. It's been a little lively the last couple of days, but not for the best reasons in the world, but it's kind of understandable. All right. Okay. All right. And see, and see the he says... For him, at least this weekend gave us the new Descendants movie with Brandy as Cinderella again, though with blue hair this time. Well, maybe she's having a midlife crisis or something. Anything's hmm. plausible. Let me see if I can bring um, Barry into the call here. It's thinking. 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 <laughs> this this has been quite quite an adventurous day, don't you agree? Oh boy, you have no idea. Uh, I think I kind of have a general idea. All right. So while that's going through, um, we'll kick things off with how was your week? How was your day? How was your week? So, Ari, how was your week? How was your day? Oh, uh, my day has been a complete fucking train wreck. Oh yeah. Well, this this past weekend, I uh, checked my bank balance on my uh, on my Wells Fargo app, and I and when I looked at it, it found I had suddenly gone to having five dollars in my account. Ooh, like five dollars in my name. Jokes on them. My name's not worth that much, but anyhow, I was then on the phone with Wells Fargo for like forty five minutes trying to figure out what happened, and what they ended up doing was they put a a hard block on my account, mm-hmm. my both of them, and uh, canceled my current debit card. And I just got an email earlier saying that they're sending the new one out to me. Oh, that's good. But I was looking at the uh, transactions, you know, trying to figure out what what the hell is uh, going on, and mm-hmm. uh, apparently it's some like three of them were money transfers. Yeah. And the other one was uh, to some financial planner in uh, California. Hmm. I don't know what had happened, but uh, you know, I, I'm having the, uh, the the transactions disputed, obviously. Oh, well, that's good. But it's still going to take a long time to uh, you know, get my money back. So yeah. Money transfer, purchase, authorized RIA financial. I yeah. have no idea what that is. All right, you know, you know what Western Union is, right? Yeah, I know what Western Union is. RIA, yeah. RIA, RIA Financial is just another variant. It's just another Western Union service for Latin American countries. Uh, yeah, they they cleaned out both of my accounts, and I'm very pissed off about it. How? Uh, they transferred all the money in my savings into my checking, and just there's a tra- like there's several of the uh, transactions for like five hundred dollars or more. All right, I'm going to assume that your bank login account got compromised. That's one of the things. And and you saw and these transactions, so they might have somehow tra- traced a transaction or something like that, and was able to make a fake card or something shit like that. Were these debit transactions or credit or credit transactions? Uh, they're debits. Debits, yeah. That's wild. At least you're getting your money back. And what's it's just gonna take a while and I was and I like 
earlier today, I only had like five dollars left in cash, and I used mm-hmm. it to get gas. Yeah. After work, I had to uh, go over to a bank and actually use a freaking withdrawal slip, a paper one, to uh, get some cash on hand so I can, you know, put gas in my car and all that. Because I can't use my current debit card. Do you have a credit card? Uh, no, I don't. You should have. You should invest in a credit card. You, honestly, you should have two credit cards. One sh- for all of your subscriptions. Put it on that card, and a second mm-hmm. card as a backup, as an emergency for something like this. So you can just swipe and do what you got to do. Yeah. Though I did, uh, thankfully, they didn't take my paycheck because the paycheck cleared after the hard block was put on. That's good. Mm hmm. So I still have that. And it's just been, you know, very stressful and very agonizing to have to contend with all that. I, I do. I, I, I totally get you. I totally do. Mm hmm. Well, and I, today was uh, absolute chaos at work for the first half, so that was also fun. Well, I will say, my weekend day was more chilled. Um, let's see, what did I? Yeah, I went to go visit a friend um, who came to town, hanging out with a bunch of others. I went to go visit my friend Matt as well that weekend. His because the weekend prior, his like, right after we hung out, his cat passed on. So we went to, you know, kind of celebrate his cat's life and give our condolences and so forth. You know, and, th- and things are going good with that. Um, I went to go visit my grandfather in the hospital. And before anybody starts throwing the love and sympathy reacts, don't worry. Fine. It's just routine work that had to be done. So it was nothing major. He's still a spitfire like he's always been. So complete with mm-hmm. the jokes and the riddles. So there's that, and that's been good. Um, let's see. All right, I'm just seeing what Barry is saying. So let's see, can we dial you? All right. So th- th- there is there is that. So right now I'm getting ready for uh, Collecticon, which is this weekend. I also went to uh, Contropolis, and I got a couple of awesome um, autographs. I got, and which I will talk about during uh, Geek Roundtable, which is pretty cool. I may, um, won't pick that up, but I will tell you about the autograph that I got. So, um, I just realized I don't think I have anything prepped for some of that, but that's all said and dandy. We're not too worried about that, so, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. For some reason, Ari, did you change your video, your webcam settings? No. You are slow and sluggish, my friend. That's odd. It, it's like you're coming in real slow and blurred. That makes no sense. Yeah. Let me, ch- let me check something real quick. Alright. Right, because right, I'm looking at the web like the the Twitch stream and I'm looking at the uh Skype screen. Uh-huh. It still looks like it's kind of slow. I I don't know. Hmm. Jeez, nothing wants to go right today, does it? Yeah, I know. Alright, looks like um it's mo- bruh Barry <laughs> is is ready. We're going to dial her d- dial them in. It should be working. There we go. Let's hey Barry. Let's switch over to three person mode. And we'll bring that up and we'll kinda hide that. And what the hell? Why is this not what technology's oh. just fun today, y'all. For a second I was like I thought like, oh my god, I'm seeing double four Aries. Oh my gosh, that's so many Aries. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's oh, a horrible wait, hold on, hold on. prospect. I, I, I'm I sorry. see. I see. No, it's okay. okay. There we go. 
There we go. All right, because when you said PNG, I went to go flip on the local image I had for you, and it didn't come oh. up at all. So. Oh, okay. Well, we'll figure that out. We'll We're, figure you're up that and out. running, yeah. and I love the 16-bit makeover. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been for Stardew streams and stuff like that. But hello and good evening and welcome into Anime Jam Session. Those of us listening here on twitch.tv slash Anime Jam Session. Well, you didn't miss much because I got in late, so we started late. And then my playlist was thrown into utter whack, which I fixed yet again. And, Yay! And for some reason, everybody else is being slow, so I don't know, so... I may have to reboot my machine again. I mean, after this show. It it happens. It happens. Mm. And I have been out of practice with quite a lot of my technology. And apparently OBS is being very persnickety recently. So, uh, yeah. yeah. It better not be too persnickety because that means I have to switch to Streamlabs. And I absolutely hate Streamlabs. I mean, Streamlabs is based on OBS anyway. So I any know. problems... OBS is having, Streamlabs will no, also have, But the thing is, Streamlabs, you can't add extra shit to Streamlabs. That's the only issue. That's true, yeah. that's true. So you can't, there's less chance to screw it up. <laughs> right. But still. Yeah. Anywho, you are just in time. We were just talking about our week and our day, so Barry, okay. I know it's been about a month, so how has your month yeah. been? Uh, it's been going, it's been going. So I have uh, been taking a little bit of a hiatus from streaming overall but generally um i am currently uh, playing through a game called once human which i definitely was uh, not doing before the stream haha <laughs> no i was i definitely was it is uh, quite entertaining it is a farming sim but it has some really cool uh it has some really cool like mechanics to it and it's very much if you like stranger things those those are kind of the creatures i will say for any of our photosensitive viewers it may not be for you i'm not sure of their accessibility um capabilities but they do have a lot of photo um flashing lights and things like that so if you're hypersensitive to those things or you think you could have seizures i would not recommend it for those folks however for anybody else who really likes sci-fi uh alien life form spookiness it's really fun um i just got into it like the day yesterday or the day before um and generally uh i'm getting prepped for otakon so otakon's around the bend and i've been kind of working on cosplays for that but mm -hmm. i definitely uh am not prepared at all to get back into convention season i don't think most of us are i'm just kind of glad i'm like in a bit of a hiatus at the moment because honestly yeah i have basically maybe two three cons left and i'm done for the year yeah well that's nice yeah i think a lot of people have been really cutting back and i think a big part of that is just the quality of shows has gone down mm -hmm. um i know that blurred con just happened recently and they had issues with things like um theft and vandalism and fake money being spent at vendors so oh, i am I, not right. surprised by that at all i can say something i can say some things about that but i might they will be, I, I think it's fine. I think they've no, had, they've they've no. gotten beaten down. The, the things I would say, people would call me a sellout, a hater, a, a racist among my peoples, an uncle. Look, I just call it like it is. Between that and from what I heard, the low quality cosplays and people twerking in the middle of the afternoon in front of children. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm going to tell you this right now. And yeah, a yeah. big part of this is just con culture. Mm -hmm. There are tons of people that twerk in front of children at conventions. You can't just say that about one thing. That's literally every anime convention ever I have seen. Little white girls, little, you know, everybody twerking. And yeah, but, I, I don't, but, I don't but, do but, that but, a lot, but, but there's a difference. I will say this. I have not seen it in the middle of the afternoon around kids and stuff like that. I've seen some I silly have, shit. I have. Maybe it's the fandoms that you're hanging around, but this younger generation does not care. But, uh, you know, and you're right. There's two sides to this. Like, yeah, there is one side of I should be able to take my kids to a con and not have to see this. And the other side is this is a convention. This happens. I look yeah. at it this way. Keep it chill during the afternoon and right around the evening times. Go balls out. That's it. Because by the evening, it's time to put the kid, take the kids home, take the kids away, you know? 
Well, and I think a lot of it too is um, the the people watching their kids, right? Because conventions are, well, as much as they are a great place and a safe space, usually, right? Usually, I, I want to preface this. They are not a babysitting service. Mm -hmm. Do not drop your kids off yeah. and expect them to just be taken care of. Yes, it is a village, right? Yes. Every fandom, every every community, everything is like a village. We kind of take care of our own. Right. But at the same respect, you're in a public place. You want to know where your kids are at all mm -hmm. times. Yeah. And there are a lot of age-gated things that they should not be viewing, like yeah. the NSFW or 18 Plus stuff. But at the same point, it's a convention where a lot of people are on vacation and a lot of people are not going to mind their P's and Q's. Right. So as much as it is a respect to be respectful at the convention and not be NSFW before 10 p.m., if the convention itself allows for those kind of mm -hmm. content, you can't really tell people not to. Right. No, I know that. I know that. Okay. But, but also at the same time, you know, if it was me and I'm a parent and I'm like, if I'm my kids tell me you're going to this convention, I'm going to go with them or I'm like, I'm going to go this year and then I will, you know, like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was at conventions by myself when I was 13 or 14. Right. Mind, I didn't hang out in a lot of the circles that were... But you know what it is? Yeah. I don't want to go down this, this, this okay, road. Okay, okay. But... I mean, that's fine. We but, can move on. No, no. I'll say this and we can move on. For yeah. a con like BlurCon, I expected something a little more refined, less ratchety, you know. Mm -hmm. I expect that type of shit during the evenings at night. I, it's not like... I don't expect... People rolling in at 10 o'clock and putting the bass on the music and just wiling out. I don't know. It's, I, just, yeah. it's, just, my, it's just how I expected certain things. No, and there, it, there's it, a difference fine. between expectations yeah. and execution. And, and, and reality. I mean, at, but again, at this point. Yeah, it, but again, this is a convention yeah. I have no... I have no desire to ever attend, so that that's sad. That. Yeah, maybe we are yeah. just old Velvet Rose creations. Thank you. Yeah, I think we are just old. And I get it. Like, mm. it's not something that we would like to see, or there's things that we wouldn't like to not engage right. with, especially with with smaller, gen like, younger generations. But it happens. Not, but, but it's also like, the culture. Sometimes it's not no. even the age, oh, it's okay. the culture. Like, I had people who are younger than me telling me about mm -hmm. this stuff. And most of them were like, you know, yeah. I just wasn't feeling that. They liked what they saw, but they expected it to be played out a certain way. And I no, get that. and that's yeah. definitely yeah. I can I can appreciate yeah. that because mm -hmm. there was a lot of issues apparently yeah. behind the scenes with like heads of department changing last minute and and mm -hmm. just not even not even just the culture of the convention, but like the culture of professionalism changing as well. Yeah, like the fact that people weren't reached out to by email when the head of departments changed and all this other stuff that kind of happened behind the scenes. So it's definitely. I think a lot of conventions are suffering from this this idea that they're they're kind of sitting in their own success to a point, and so when they falter, when they lose staff and things like that, they don't know how to re, re recover from that, and then right. they suffer more. But anyway, we can move on. Yeah, we we'll definitely move on from that. So mm -hmm. enough about that. We we're going to go into that. We've gotten to our weekend days, so we're gonna do um. A little bit of housekeeping, yes, yes, yes. A little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, let me take a look at my list here. Don't forget, episodes of our video, po the video podcast, are available on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash anime jam session. Just click on uh, podcasts and episodes are there, and they come, they become available Thursdays at twelve noon. And don't forget, we have another convention coming up uh, this weekend, Collecticon, New Jersey. Is basically the, the it's like the biggest anime cosplay video game trading card convention on the planet uh, in the country or something like that, and they have multiple ones. Uh, me and CC Gray, which will be there. I will not be doing photography. I will be strictly in cosplay. We are doing Usagi and Mamoru from Sailor Moon. So, and I found my wig, and I had the proper paint. It's, it, we're gonna have a little bit of fun here. And what's interesting is that um, the way the con is is not. It's like it kind of reminds me of Contropolis, which I'll get into in a bit. It's there's not a lot of fan panels. It's more like industry panels, like industry as in you know guest panels and so forth. So you know. And as Serenity four ten eighty eight asked me if I got my pants for Mamoru, which I just said, yep, I got them. So, we are golden. Um, I might actually throw them on tomorrow just to see if they fit, but I got the, the like the largest size I can get because 
the two sizes below was like, this is a little tight, but you know, this is good. This is fine. Mm. This is fine. So, anywho, now that we got that out the way, we are going to get into our Geek Roundtable. This is where we talk about the geekier aspects of our life and what's going on. So, Ari, what you got for our Geek Roundtable? Uh, well, I reached into my uh, big stack of uh, Lego sets that I haven't finished yet. Mm -hmm. And I, a while ago, I put together two smaller ones. Yeah. The first one is a, uh, well, there's three and a uh, MTV-sponsored set. And this one is a mixtape. Oh, well. didn't I? Oh, yeah. I Cute. I want, I want those. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, the second one is a Lego boombox. Yeah. With its own companion little mixtape. It doesn't quite fit inside because of the little uh, spindles for the uh, tape itself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's nice little display pieces. I mean, yeah. when I saw it, I just, I was looking at it, and I'm like, <sighs> let me get my wallet. Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, as a kid, you would get these Lego sets, and once you completed them, in the back of the book, or on the box, you saw recommendations for other setups, and the booklets would not really tell you how to make the other setups, but you would take the existing book that showed you how to make the initial set, and you would kind of figure out, oh, move this here, move that here. You know, it was uh, kind of fun. Some of the sets, they advertise, like, three in one, which is just, mm -hmm. you you go into the book, you pick a layout that you like, and you build it like that. Yep. Okay. Um, don't mind me. I, as you know, when I get stuff, like, when I get, like, my figurines and so forth, I leave them in the bubble wrap. Maybe it was the weather, but it kind of, the bubble wrap kind of stuck to the box, but it didn't tear anything. So I'm just like gently and meticulously trying to pull it all off. So, anywho, um, when it comes to anime, I finished Windbreaker and it's really good. If you like River City Ransom, Kunio Kun, Rival Schools, Cromarty High. <laughs> positivity and all that good stuff, high school stuff, fights and stuff, Tenjo Tenge, then Windbreaker's up your alley. It's it's really, it's a good one. I started Elf is on a Diet, and I got to rewatch the first episode because I was kind of falling asleep watching it last night, thinking that, oh, I could do this, but no. Um, <laughs> and like I said, I went to Contropolis, and I hung out, with um with Kyle Haybear for a bit, really awesome dude. I like to call him voice actor dad because he gives off awesome dad vibes. He has mm -hmm. BDE, big dad energy. <laughs> ten uh, out of ten can agree. Yep. Very chill dude. Mm -hmm. And then I hung out with Damon Mills for a bit. He is a he is a friend. I've known him for years, so I hung out with him and we talked and we went out to dinner. Because I would like to say he's basically uh, Michelle Knotts' protege because she brought him in, taught him the good stuff, and sent him on his way. And now he is a complete success. So, you know. Um, which You like to hear it. Yeah. And evidently, he's been working and hustling, which brings me to this funny story. So we're talking, you know, and he's packing it up. He's like, he's heading back to the hotel room to kind of pass out. And I'm like, okay, I'll meet you in a bit. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, dinner tonight. And he goes, oh, no, dinner is tomorrow. And I was like, oh, really? And I told him I couldn't go because I was visiting my grandfather in the hospital again. So I'm like, okay, fine. I must have gotten something mixed up. So I hop on the bus, head back to New York. I'm on the Lincoln Tunnel. I get a phone call from Michelle. It's her roommate, Chris, telling me, ask me where I'm at. And I'm just like, I'm on a bus back to New York. And he goes, oh, what? I'm like, I was told there was no dinner. I'm like, oh, dinner is still, still on. We're just running late. And I'm like, okay, I will meet y'all at Mitsua Plaza. Because I, real, I figure, you know, even if I went back on the bus back, you know, it's just be easier for me to just hit uh, Penn State, well, Port Authority, catch another bus and go out there, which I did. I it waited about 20 minutes. There was traffic for them coming in, but we made it. So we went to Mitsua. We 
went to the um food court, grabbed some grub and enjoy ourselves. I got some um curry, which was very good. And then after that, we're, we walked around the store for a bit and left. We couldn't get any ice cream because the, the ice cream place had closed up early. So we're trying to figure out what do we want to do? Do we get ice cream, this or that? We're standing in the parking lot. Then the talks of alcohol comes up. Then next thing you know, we drive 15 minutes to an Applebee's. <laughs> and then we spend the next two hours with cocktails and margaritas and appetizers. All right, we're just having a grand old time until we get our server. Now, there's something wrong with the server. He was he was really nice, really respectful. And you ever have that moment like you're talking to somebody and you're like, wait a minute. You sound familiar. Don't I know you? So basically, as the server is taking out orders and stuff, I guess he hears Damon's voice, and he comes back over. He goes, "Wait a minute!" And he points and go, "I know you." <laughs> and he just shout. Well, he kind of sort of shouted uh, Damon out at the table, but it was late. There weren't that many people in the restaurant, but he got really excited. He got to meet one of his favorite voice actors, so that was cool. Yeah, that that sounds pretty neat. Yeah. If it, I know if it was me, I would have been very chill about it. I was like, wait, you're so-and-so. I'm a long-time fan. It's a pleasure. It's an honor to meet you. If you need anything, just let me know. I guess I get that from being in around people and voice act to, so, for a point where I just don't have to, Yeah, you've been a geek longer than that, that yeah, guy has from the sound that of it. And when, like, let's say we were in like a fancy restaurant. If that person, he would have been like, I know you're a, a bit of, you know, it would have been like that, you know. So we had fun. I and I was dragging ass at work yesterday because I didn't get home until late. And I was just running, I'm kind of running on fumes. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I had to get up an extra half hour early. So, anywho, enough about that. Um, I will continue on my collection of basically. My favorite girl from ReZero, Rem. And I have this figure of her here. Easter egg. Happy Easter, Easter Rem. Where she's wearing a cute little outfit with bunny ears. Precious figure. Happy Easter renewal Rem figure. And I get these figures not just because I'm a fan of Rem. Because I think she's best girl in ReZero. But my friend Kevin Lillard, who passed a while back, is also a fan of Rem, so I also get get those figures for the, that reason as well. There is that, there it is, and there's that. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Barry, what you got for uh geek around table? Um, well, like I mentioned earlier, I have been getting into a new game called Once Human, which okay, is kind cool. of an interesting one. Um. And generally been getting back into cosplay a little bit. So if anybody mm. is also getting back into cosplay for the summertime, definitely let me know in chat. Um, yeah, I have still been playing the MMO that I've been playing for the last two years. And a bunch of us are getting together at Otakon. So um, a few of us are planning to make outfits to go with our avatars, which are going to be really cute. Um and so we're just going to dress up and have a lot of fun. But generally, that's kind of what uh, the geeky stuff I've been doing recently. I also got into some leather work recently, which was something that I didn't know I was going to do this year. i um, getting more involved with it because I've made corsets and things like that with it before. Uh, but this year, I actually had a client reach out and wanted a piece out of leather. Uh, just kind of I call it like the whiskey grandpa's satchel is what I'm kind of calling that project. Because it's a cigar bag and then a satchel uh, for them to to have all their little hobbies together. So they've got right. like a specialized cutters and stuff for cigars. Okay. Um, and just wanted a nice bag that they could carry around with them for socializing and things like that. So um, I ended up investing in that uh, nerdiness. So if anybody's ever been getting into lots of crafty things... Um, leather work is not a very good, easy entry-level one. But I will tell you... A uh, good find was um, traditionally a lot of the entry level kits for leather work are between four hundred and six hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I ended up finding one online for like one hundred and twenty. So bad. definitely keep your eye out 
when you're starting to get into things because the likelihood of someone having gotten invested in the hobby and then giving it up is very high. There are also groups on still on places like Facebook of things like the ADHD hobby swap and something. I, I have a few groups like that where it's just people that have gotten into a hobby, given it up, and then uh, are selling or getting rid of their supplies. So, um, yeah, it's been kind of fun. Uh, leather work was not on my bingo card for 2024, but I'm definitely <laughs> happy happy to uh, take it on. I'm, I'm super excited to see where it goes. Oh, glad to hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh- so let's go ahead and get our first story going. Um, but before we get into that, Ronma421 says that my figure collection has to take up a whole room by now. Kind of jealous over here, truthfully. My brother in Christ, I want you to understand, I behind me in like three of these boxes is full of figures. There's at least maybe 10 figures per box, if that. So I have about maybe 40 figures still in a box. And there's about, let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, one. 12, 15, 18, 1. I have about 40 other figures on display. And this includes tchotchkes, nendroids, and little stuff, okay? (laughs) I mean, I realize I've ran out of room, but it's still not going to stop me. Eventually, when I get into this new apartment, which I really hope that I get, I can actually display them a lot better, and then I can actually, maybe if I think, if I remember to, actually rotate them in and out, you know? Um, I don't even think I'm, I don't even know if I'm taking this glass display case when I move. I might just leave it behind, just get a, a regular book, elongated bookcase, and just run lights around it and just run, and do that. So we, we'll see. We'll see. Let's do this. Round table should have reflected. Okay, great. Um, now we're going to get into my our next thing. Uh, Contropolis, a quick review. This will not take long. Okay. Contropolis is basically, I have to call a chain of anime, of comic conventions. It's run by Alter Reality Entertainment. They run Rhode Island Anime Con and Rhode Island Comic Con, which is, Rhode Island Comic Con is becoming like the New York Comic Con of New England, which is good. Good for them. So, it's a two-day convention in the Meadowlands Expo Center. I would like to call this Funko Pop Con, because let's because <laughs> let's be real. If you go to any comic convention, I guarantee you, a quarter to a third of the vendors will have nothing. Will either have some, anywhere from a few Funko Pops to nothing but Funko Pops. The panels were all industry based, like it was with the guests, and they're talking about their 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 titles that they're working on as well. Um, I think there was maybe one, like a couple of normal panels, but check real real quick. Let's go under events here and let me see what it says here. Here we go. Programming schedule. There was a cosplay contest, but I didn't check around for that. Okay. So basically, these were mostly industry panels. Like there was one about uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, Starship Troopers, One Night. At Fr- These were all mostly um, in pe- professional people in the convention center, in the convention scene, which is kind of cool. I mean, like guests and so forth, you know. Right. There was a tribute panel to Akira Toriyama, which I thought was great. I wish I stuck around for that. And there was a cosplay contest. I didn't. I. I'm going to tell you this right now. I was there until 4 o'clock. I don't even think it actually happened. Okay? I don't think it actually happened. Now, because of how NJ Transit was, I didn't get there till late, and I missed one of the guests to get my pop, one of my pops autographed, and it's okay. I think when I got there that, sun, that Sunday around 3 o'clock, there had to be at least no more than 20 cosplayers there. And when I got off the bus, I'm expecting to see people hanging out in front of the convention. No. I'm like, did I get the right location? 
and I saw the banner of like tickets here. I was like, okay. And I walk inside. I uh, it was like there's not a lot of people here. But it is what it is. I did get just to meet Mick Foley and I got his autograph. That was great and I really appreciate that. I would probably check out Contropolis again next year, but if there's not a lot of cosplayers, it is what it is. And mm-hmm. two day con- people who run two-day conventions, please understand, it is not normal to have your con- your cosplay contest on a Sunday. You still have it on a Saturday regardless. <coughs> I have actually seen a lot of smaller comic conventions, though, have their cosplay contests on Sundays for some reason. Just... I. Maybe a hall costume contest for Sunday, but not your main one, guys. It takes so much time to prep. That, it takes so much effort. They do it on a Sunday to keep people there to stay later. Yeah, to have to have it, you know yeah. an event or something. But it just mm-hmm. it it is I don't know. It just I, I, doesn't. I, work. I, I I will say I did like yeah. the fact that everything was done by seven o'clock on a Saturday. One thing about comic yeah. conventions as opposed to anime cons, comic mm-hmm. conventions, everything is done by seven eight o'clock latest. Anime cons, oh, we still going strong, bro. You know, here, here's a strong bow. Let's we're keeping it going. It's like that. Mm. So enough about that. If you're looking to just spend money on merch and autographs and stuff, go to Contropolis. If you're looking for something besides that, uh, I'd either skip it or just go for one day and then decide afterwards. So enough about that. We're gonna get into our articles for tonight, and then right after that, Ari has to duck out because he has first shift, and I understand that pain. Mm-hmm. All right, Ari. It, now this article, you're talking about how a transportation manager is giving is blaming anime for giving trucks a bad rep. Uh, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> As reported by Weekly Logistics News and translated by Automaton. A transportation manager in Shizuoka, Japan, at the logistics industry reputation is being ruined by anime that used the common trip on the main characters getting hit by a truck and killed. Uh, an anime genre called Isekai is particularly to blame, they said. These sh- shows see the main character killed in the real world early and transported to a magical location where they embark on a new adventure. It's very common for that initial cause of death to come via a truck, so much that a meme known as truck coon has emerged which mocks the trope. As also with the ter- as also with the term isekai being a verb for being hit by a truck and sent to another world like that. <laughs> Anime including Wise Man's Grandchild, Knights and Magic, Zombie Land Saga, many more all use it, and no longer are allowed in another world even explains a truck as an entity which chooses and brings unhappy people to a new world. Mm. Uh, the transportation manager said the use of anime has subliminal messaging which leads to an intrinsic d- dislike of trucks and transportation companies. Despite their understanding of freedom of expression and storytelling is important, they'd rather trucks weren't blamed for everything. Though to be fair, a lot of the times when they show the person getting hit by the truck, it's often a very grisly scene. Yeah. Unless and it's not always just, you know, adults being hit by it. There's, they, I've seen some where, you know, kids get uh, get splattered all over that sidewalk, and it's mm-hmm. very disgusting. I'm surprised that they don't also say that about trains, then. Because there's been enough trains in horror anime and anime in general that... Oh, that's like, Truck Coon's cousin, Train Sean. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, like, it's definitely a trope. And I, I don't know. I... I I would say it's it's such a weird a weird equivalency. I don't know. I don't know how much I agree with that. Um well I would say that well let's see here. Um see the beery says and Excel Saga and the Magical Girl before that, which I get. Now, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say, like, in the late 90s and 2000s where this would happen, it wasn't a lot of anime where somebody get hit by a vehicle and they end up a spirit detective or in another world or someone getting hit by a train and they're done. It doesn't happen a lot back then. 
Now in the it's 2020 and 2010s, this is happening more often. It's not a trope anymore. It's a crutch, and they're using this crutch, you know, to tell a good story. Maybe there's a better way around it. Like mm-hmm. there's a isekai where where they brought transported seven geniuses to another world, and it and it was a good anime that should have gotten the season two. No, nope, if I'm not mistaken, nobody was hit by a truck in that one. They were all selected to go to this other world to help. Sort of like Captain N, the Game Master, which technically is an isekai cartoon. <laughs> and I guess the Super Mario Brothers Super Show is also an isekai cartoon as well. If, oh boy. If Truck Coon wasn't going around hitting people and sending them to all every, other worlds in every anime season for the last maybe five or so years, that this transportation manager wouldn't be saying anything about it. That's, More than likely. That, that's my theory. Mm-hmm. Like, the less you hear about it, it's not that big deal, but when you see it all the time, you're just like, really? Really? So, I, I get it. And on that note, this is what we wave bye to Ari. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. You got it. And we'll see you next week. Have a good night. You too. Now we're going to switch over to two play mode. And I have to go ahead and change the overlay so that it shows um, Barry's name instead of um, Ari's. Ah, yes. No, it is I, Ari Rockefeller. Fine fine gentleman. (laughs) The The fine one. A no, fine, fine gentleman. All right, so next story we're going to talk about is Rent a Girlfriend, which I that anime's kind of grown on me because I was hate watching it the first season. I started hate watching it the second season, then I started to enjoy it a lot more. Granted, I think Chizuru and Kazuya both need to be slapped upside the head for some common sense, but is. Now, I bring this up because there's going to be an adventure game for Rent-A-Girlfriend. They just announced that uh, that, the, that the anime Rent-A-Girlfriend, better known as Kanojo Oko Okarishimasu, is going to have an inspiring adventure game that will come out on Switch and PlayStation 4 later this year. The game is called Kanojo Okarishimasu Tsuhisi and to Mizugi no Kanojo, which means Rent-A-Girlfriend. The Girl of the Horizon and a Swimsuit. Pre-orders will start next month on August 5th. Majors will also reveal more details about the game on that day. The game will com- completely figure will, com- will have a completely original story that takes place on an island in the summer where, where the five heroines will experience a part-time job once a week, which is the main girls that you see in Season 3. You can watch the anime on Crunchyroll, all three seasons are available there. And it has been announced that there will be a fourth season in 2025. This basic story is Kinoshita Kazuya is a 20-year-old failure of a college student. He managed to kiss his girlfriend once but was dumped a month after. Oh, damn it. I never want to go through that again. Completely spiteful, Kazuya uses a certain method to date a girl. He goes to a meeting place and suddenly hears, yeah, Kazuya-kun, right? A beautiful girl brushing her long black hair behind her ears. They are smiling at him. Her name, Mizu, Chizuru Mizuhara. Something real is born just after a single rental. A reckless rom-com filled with love and excitement is about to begin. And it's filled with chaos and stupidity. And I kind of like it. Now, there was also a live action series, which I need to get my hands on and watch that. Because I'm legit curious about that. I think I know where to find it. So, my thing is, I don't know how this series is going to be, this game is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be, like, a visual novel style, if it's an actual action-adventure game where you're taking the role of each character and doing stuff. Well, when they take the pre-orders and the extended video come, and the video trailer comes out, then we will know. And I'm hoping this game does come to the States, because, I mean... We've had some success with anime games coming here. Like, we've had the Miss Kobayashi game, which still feels after I bought it two years ago. 
Uh, we have the Spy Family game, which recently came out. And we have a couple of games called the Quintessential Quintuplets on Switch. But those are visual novels. So if this anime is up your rally and if you're a fan of it, I recommend supporting it by buying the game. All right, now we got that out the way. We're going to get into our next story here. Um, mm -hmm. The next two, which is right up Barry's alley about Hello Kitty. Yeah, so for those who have not heard, Jindito has been on a stint of quite a few, um, I, I would say like partnerships, I guess, would be the best colloquialism for that. But Hello Kitty is getting a creepy in this new collection with one of Japan's best known horror creators. Hello Kitty and the rest of her cute and cuddly friends are stepping into the nightmarish world of Jinji Ito, one of Japan's most famous horror manga creators. And the popular Sanrio franchise will release an assortment of goods based on Ito's most acclaimed series. According to Japanese news site Mantan Web, Sanrio's Hello Kitty brand is partnering with the famous horror author for a new line of merchandise based on the most popular works, the first set of merchandise called Gao Tome, which will feature the Sanrio characters with Tome Kawakami from her self-titled series wearing Gyaru-inspired clothing. The second set of merchandise called The Floating Beautiful Boy at the Crossroads stars the intersection Bishonen and Fukara Ryusuke from The Love Sick Dead. Ito, who built his career on writing and illustrating critically acclaimed horror stories, amusingly noted that unexpected partnership between him and Hello Kitty when saying, when I was approached about collaborating with Sanrio characters, I wondered why someone so scary like me would be chosen. But my wife and daughter love Sanrio project, products, I jumped at the opportunity because I wanted to help boost my father's stock. Mm. When I actually started drawing, I was reminded once again that the cuteness of Hello Kitty and other characters is the result of exquisite design, and I was in awe of the sense and learned a lot from it. The Hello Kitty Exchange Ito collection will be available exclusively at Parco branded retail stores from August 23rd to September 9th of this year in Tokyo, and again in September 27th to October 14th in Osaka. Acrylic stands, t-shirts, original artwork, and more will be sold at various pop-up shops. The official YTE website goes more in-depth with a full list of merchandise at the retail prices. Tomi, Lovesick Dead, and other manga series by Ito are published by the Eng in English by Viz Media, and five years after its 2019 announcement, the Uzumaki adaptation is expected to air on 2020 in 2024 on Cartoon Network's Adult Swim block. Hmm. Uzumaki was originally set to air in 2020, but it got delayed, obviously, because of all the stuff we went through. Um, the Panini. And, uh, the pan, yeah, damn it. Being produced by IG, the anime studio best known for Ghost in Shell, and it just needed more time to deliver the quality of intricate designs and detail line work. And the very popular uh, uh, Kaiju Number no. Eight—that was a good anime. Yes, yes. Somebody was calling it a ripoff of Attack on Titan. I'm like, no. What they what what they did in Kaiju Number no. Eight in twelve episodes, it took Attack on Titan two seasons to do. Shut up. Hmm. And I remember seeing someone shared a meme about the Hello Kitty uh, wallpapers. Like it said something about like some cra the crazy girl that you know will have this as a wallpaper, and I was just like, oh. But yeah, continuing on from something spooky to something more summery, I guess. Yay. We also have another collab for one of our, I think, a little less beloved, or like he's given less love, but I love Karopi. For anybody who doesn't know who Karopi is, Karopi is the froggy mascot who is also one of Hello Kitty's beloved friends in the Sanrio collection. Sanrio and Retrospect's new 90s style Karopi camera gives Hello Kitty a run for her money. Hello Kitty and Friends popular Sam Rio collaborates once more on a retro product design and manufacturer studio retrospect, this time for a Karopi themed film camera inspired by the distinctive 90s aesthetic. So think of those disposable camera kind of vibes from the 1990s. Via press release, Sanrio's popular frog Karopi is the star of Retrospect's newest retro film camera, the Karopi FC 11 35mm camera themed Let's Get Hoppin' goes live on Retrospect and Sanrio's website on July 12, 2024. It features a fixed focus lens and built-in flash with a bold design inspired by the character. The FC11 features playful colors and Kuropi imagery with a vibrant teal yellow and red and black color scheme. Icons and bold typography complete the 90s design aesthetic, 
Readers can check out the teaser video, images of the Kuropi FC11 35mm camera, and more information on their website. Retrospect's creative director, Michael Kempen, said on the new collaboration, Keropi was first introduced in 1988 and really blew up in the 90s. So when people think Keropi, it's usually product designs from that time and era defining the mental image. And that's what we wanted to capture with this release. We went digging through old products, looking for unique takes on the character, and hit on this really cool series of designs from 1996 used for some backpacks, lunch boxes, wallets, and similar items. Items children at the time would have treasured in a way that would also create a strong connection to the artwork. The FC-11 follows Retrospect's previous Polaroid 600 Kuropi Cam Instant Film Camera. The Kuropi's Cameras follows the Hello Kitty FC-11, a limited edition camera inspired by Tomatoes and Hello Kitty's iconic red and white pattern, as well as the Guritama Film Camera released in June. Guritama's eggy design and nonchalant demeanor were highlights of the latter, highlights of the latter collaboration with a vibrant yellow lens cap sculpted to resemble a yolk surrounded by egg white. Keropi joins Hello Kitty and Gudetama as some of the most popular Sanrio characters within his expansive franchise lineup, and this year's Sanrio character rankings received the most votes ever. Keropi hopped his way up to a respectable seventh place, and all three characters happily made the top 20. I believe this year the top contender was Cinnamon Roll, beloved pupperino of Sanrio. And I'm looking at the camera online, and you can get the Hello Kitty tomato one too. Guess how much? Yeah. Guess how much this thing is? This thing costs. How much? Sixty bucks. I was gonna say about. I would say fifty to sixty dollars. But I'm gonna tell you the resale market. I would not be surprised if the resale market goes higher. I want to say there's no point in having a resale market when you can just go on the site and just order it. It's not like it's a limited edition True. run. If they're if yes. they're selling internationally and it's that's not just the translated cost from dollars to yen. Honestly, right now is the best time to buy your collectibles, even if you're buying them internationally, because the yen is just so weak against the dollar. Yeah, but I think it's like seventy five cents on the dollar right now. Last I checked, like last like the end of last week, it was one hundred and sixty yen to the dollar. That's pretty good. Now it's like around 157. Wait for it to hit 160 again so I can pull the trigger and just buy some yen for my trip next year. Yeah, I was going to say, if nothing else, um, as far as the, the Jinji Ito collaboration, I imagine that's all going to be a uh, shopping service mm -hmm. uh, if you need to, and it's probably going to be all sold out. Yeah, but the thing is, with the, but the, uh, the, the Hello Kitty cameras, you can get this on a regular website, so it's very yeah, available. So, so it's nice probably available on the Japanese sites, too, so... <laughs> And pod culture in our chat here at twitch.tv slash anime jam session saying, Film! Back in my day, birds etched pictures on stone tablets! Flintstone photos for the win. I, that's very cute, yeah. I've been to actually talking with a friend because I used to do darkroom photography um, development and stuff like that. And so yeah. it just, it, it's just taking me back. Oh, I, I've never... I, I barely remember doing that in junior high, but I know when Maka was in college, she did a course on photography and I'm hanging out mm -hmm. with her doing it in the dark room, developing the photo. You know, I'm like, man, I forgot yet about all of this stuff. Yeah. All right, we're going to get into our next story here about Lisa being at SDCC, which is really cool. For those of you who don't know, she did the opening theme, Garenge, from Demon Slayer. And then there's drama about Demon Slayer and IGN. Basically, I, I don't think IGN knows how how to hire a writer who can actually write an article, but that's... But anywho, it seems that there's the Crunchyroll concert series is going to light up San Diego Comic-Con with global J-pop sensation Lisa. She will take the stage Friday, July 26, marking the first time for the artist to perform in the U.S. in nearly 10 years. It was great. And I bet you the last time before she was here, she was either at... Otakon, AX, or SakuraCon. Coming in just ahead of the August 17th launch of Lisa's concert film, Live is Smiling Always Lander. The concert will be held at the Rady Shell at Jacobs Park and it will be free to all badge attendees of SCCC. First come, first serve, subject to capacity. So if you want to go, you better get your ass there early. Lisa brings an incredible energy to the booth and the stage, and anime fans will know her for her numerous hit theme songs, including Garenge, like I said, from Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, Crossing Field from Sword Art Online, and Homura from the uh, movie, from the Demon Slayer movie, Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, the movie, Mugen Train. 
And when when asked about it, Lisa just had to say this. I am so thrilled to be performing at the SDCC 2024 as part of the Crunchyroll Concert Series at the Rady Show. It has been nearly 10 years since my last performance in the U.S., and I am so excited to share my music with my fans in what should be a fun, unforgettable night. And for my fans across North America, celebrate with me on my upcoming concert film to theaters near you on August 17th. Let's have fun together. Well, given that Sony has bought Alamo Draft House and Sony owns Crunchyroll, I think we all know where this is going here, folks. Anyhow. Also, on top of this, experimental musician and performance artist Alice Longyu Gao will open the evening with a set that takes inspiration from her deep connection to Ayazawa's classic manga Nana, which is a favorite of Barry's, and its anime adaptation. Alice Longyu Gao commented on the occasion as well. Living in my fantasy is the foundation and nurtures my art. Crunchyroll carries anime creator and anime lover's fantasy. I want to experience how their fantasy changes their life. Doors open at 5 p.m. And fans are invited to line up anytime before that. Just look for the Crunchyroll team members and sign as you find your way to the GA line. And see you there. So I have a feeling there's going to be... You know what? I guarantee you there's going to probably be somebody there early as 5 a.m. Just, just to get a front seat. I'm calling that shit right now. Then again... Uh, I remember when me and Mako went to see um, the, the Sarah Miyu event, and I think we I think we went for the evening show. We got there like an hour and a half early, and we were basically the first ones on the line, mostly because we had That's a lot. That's always of, good. No, it was most we had general GA tickets, but we did mostly just to get to swag and stuff like that. You know, and it was good to see some friends there too. All right, um, Barry, take us out with the last story. All right. So, let's see. If you are fans of Rick and Morty, the anime trailer is confirmed for an August 15th debut with bilingual cast members. The Adult Swimming program block began streaming the official trailer for Rick and Morty the anime series on Thursday, and the trailer confirms the series will premiere in an English dub in the block on Thursday, August 15th at midnight. The English subtitled version with Japanese audio will then premiere on Saturday, August 17th at midnight in the Toonami block. Yuhei Tadano, Joe Daniels as Rick, Kesuke Chiba or Gabriel Ray Gojo as Morty, Akia Matsi or Donna Bella Litton as Summer, Manabu Muraji, or Joe Daniels as Jerry, and Takako Fuji, or Patricia Duran as Beth. Each episode will be available to stream on the Mac service and to purchase digitally a day after its Adult Swim premiere. Adult Swim has also announced that its Rick and Mobile and Marty Mo- Motor... Mo- oh my gosh, that mm. word is hot! <laughs> Morty Mobile, here we go, will start a multi-city and American tour at Comic-Con International in San Diego with advanced screenings of its first episode. The tour will end adults in Adult Swim's hometown of Atlanta, and the show will also run on Adult Swim Canada. The anime will be an original work with adapted themes and events from the main Rick and Morty animated series, and Takashi Sano, Tower of God, is writing and directing the 10-episode series at Telecom Animation Film which produced Lupin the Third, Shenmue the Animation, and he previously directed Rick and Morty vs. Genocider and Summer Meets God, Rick Meets Evil, animated shorts. Solar Entertainment is producing the series, and producers include Maki Nagano, Max Nishi, and Takenari Maeda. Yu Kiyozono from TAF is the animation producer, and Yuki Kakizoi, TAF, is the assistant producer. They are OC OC from Code Zero is performing the opening theme song of Love is Entropy with Cameron Earnshaw and Otazone O-Tone Z wrote the lyrics, composed the music, and arranged the song. Studio Dean produced the first Samurai and Shogun animated short for the Rick and Morty series that aired on Toonami and streamed online in March 2020, and the Adult Swim streamed a sequel in November 2021. Yeah, so it's that seems to be um like it's gonna be getting getting going here soon. So if you like the Rick and Morty series, definitely look forward to that. I watched an episode of Rick and Morty. I am not a fan. And after eh, the whole yeah. 
especially on Sauce Debacle, I kind of have no desire to watch this again. None whatsoever. I don't even think this. Sh How this got greenlit as an anime? But enough about that. Ooh, coffee. Sorry, I was cleaning it, up my. It looks a little bit like The Simpsons. Is is what I think it looks like. Really, it looks like if The Simpsons was turned into an anime, but. Now, Pod Culture says Star Trek Lower Decks has a similar but less vulgar vibe than Rick and Morty. I watched a few episodes of Lower Decks. I'm not a fan of it, but I liked what I saw. And I think I'm not a fan because I don't really get it, per se. And I am like a casual Star Trek fan. But I will say this. I would sit down and watch all of the seasons of Lower Decks. If I had a free day, I'd sit down and watch it. I'd enjoy it. It's just, I don't know. I Maybe I was looking for something a little bit more chaotic. I feel like I there know. are a few animated series that have come out recently that have been in that kind of same vein as the Lower Decks, where it's just kind of like, oh, we're seeing the back end of whatever system or company or, or operation is going on, right? Because there was the other one that was about sci-fi, um, not just Lower Decks, but there was the other one that was on, was it Netflix? Yeah. Um. And they and they did a few pretty good ones, right? And so I think it's just a rehashing of the same some IP, <laughs> and it's it's again it's that thing where people aren't quite nostalgic for it, so they're right. just reinventing it in a different media so that people get reattached. Yeah. Which, yeah. you know, every fandom kind of goes through its phases like that. I mean, like, did you watch Voltron Legendary Defender? I did. Yeah, I watched a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was good I, yeah. for what it was. Yeah. It was good for I, what it was, I, like I, the I, She-Ra, like the yeah, She-Ra series. That, I, yeah. I, I was never a fan of She-Ra as a kid, because I'm like, mm. that's a girl's anime. I would never, you know. But I, I guess over time, as I got older, and I was like, yeah. I watched She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. I'm like, that was a good anime. That was a good cartoon. I really liked that. And Pod Culture saying Prodigy was a good animated show. I'm going to have to check that out then. I'd, I'd been hearing good things about Prodigy, so... So I will probably put uh, Lower Decks back on my queue to watch, but I just don't know when I'll get around to it because I have so much in my queue right now. My goal is to kind of knock my anime list down by 50%, and thankfully, um, I'm not watching as much TV, and this is the summer, so I basically have until, like, October to catch up on anime before I start watching my TV shows, like my Law and Orders, my NCIS, and my 911. And thankfully for half of those shows... I can just forget that it's on and come back to it later, except for NCIS. That I will always watch. So now we got that out the way. We're here for the part of the show. This is the part of the show that y'all really stick around for. And it's Meanwhile in Japan. We originally had three articles to discuss, but seeing uh, Ari left because he had to get up early for work, and we have two, um, Barry gets a uh, first pick. Okay, I can take the first one if you like. All right, and because Mako told me about it, I will take the third story. And it's, All right. And that one, I, I'm not going to have to add that to my list so I know to check this place out when I go to Japan next year. There you go. Now, it might be a pop-up cafe, so if you're not sure, it's always good to check. But let's get into it, shall we? Yep, yep. So for those who are fans of not only anime culture, because we know you love your uwus and owos here at Anime Jam <laughs> Session, we also have some Western culture invading Japan. Deadpool and Wolverine will have a pop-up cafe coming to Tokyo with a raffle for merch included, breaking the fourth wall of hunger for a limited time. Deadpool has come a long way in Japan. The first film was unceremoniously delayed by nearly half a year, compared to virtually everywhere else in the world for some reason. Now, however, the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine will not only have among the earliest releases in the world on the 24th of July, but will also be bestowed the highest honor a movie can receive in this country, a pop-up cafe. From the 17th of July to the 5th of August at the Shibuya Sutsaya Collaboration Cafe, they will be saluting the latest film with a lineup of themed culinary creations and much more. 
The centerpiece of this menu is the two-tiered BFF box red rice and yellow curry for 2,000 yen, approximately 13 US dollars. And this combo features a Deadpool red puck of chicken rice and mild Wolverine yellow curry loaded with vegetables, showing that these two heroes go together like curry and rice with such a simile that plays a lot better in Japanese. For a lighter meal, there is the heart French toast with yellow fruits and ice cream for about 1,800 yen. These two slices of French toast Toast are smothered in two kinds of rich sauce with a bold flavor inspired by the bold lines of our film's protagonist. And on the other side, a pile of yellow fruits with yellow ice cream inspired by the fact that our film's other protagonist wears a yellow suit, showing that these two heroes go together like French toast and fruit, which isn't really a thing in Japanese either. There's also an array of drinks, such as the I Heart Coca-Cola for 990 yen and a Claw Chips yellow juice for the same price. By now, you must be thinking this is all really expensive. Well, how if they sweeten the deal by throwing out one of four types of Deadpool and Wolverine stickers for free? No? All right, Sunshine. How about being entered to win some exciting merch just by dining at this pop-up cafe? Ooh. All paying customers can take part in the drawing to receive one of four items. A necklace, a t-shirt, a button, or a Deadpool dollar. Yeah, granted, I'm not sure what the last thing even is, but anyone who a eats and drinks book. in this cafe is guaranteed to win one of them, and that ain't bad. They also have figurines, and aside from it being pricey and probability of not being held in the city you're reading this in, you can head down to the cafe at Shibuya Sutsuya Cafe, Sutsaya Cafe, Collaboration Cafe, and really those are the two reasons not to do it. I just gave you at least three reasons to do it, so get to work. But yeah, it's just really cute, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you have a chance to go and check it out, definitely do so. Right now that we got that that out of the way, now what we're going to talk about, what I was mentioning about on my trip, as you all know, I am taking a trip to Japan, and Marco had pointed this out to me about AmiAmi, which is which I believe is when I was in Akihabara, I passed by their store, but I never went in. But I was doing other things. Yes, I did some shopping, but by a little, I mean a lot. I'm like, well, I'll get around to it when I get. But it looks like Ami Ami is opening a massive eight floor anime figure skyscraper store. Now I will tell you this right now. You can go to Japan and go to a book or uh, uh Setagaya, I think it's Setagaya anime and a few other and there's like stores that are four maybe four maybe five floors of anime merch and stuff but eight this is a lot Ooh, oh now if there's now as it is it's going to open up on july 19th it's the ami ami akihabara figure tower eight story skyscraper with figures Hardcore collectors will no doubt want to scale the spire and explore each and every level, but each floor has a specialty has a specialty so you know where to go. In a way, it's kind of like Nakano Broadway, except that I didn't know where all the store what each store had. So I was going through each one because a lot of the stores were were all by the same company. I forget the name of that retailer, but they had specialty stores aside. Like there was one store just catered just to import video games. And by import, I mean American. So the first floor will be collectible figures like mini miniature figures. Look up bare brick stuff. Second floor is popular franchises such as Hatsune Miku, Evangelion, Godzilla, Nintendo, Squeenix, Shonen Jump, and Shonen Manga. Third floor is action figures like Nendroids, Figure Arts, and Figmas. All right, that's kind of cool. Uh, the fourth floor is Tokusa uh, stuff. Tokusa robots, American comics, and movie characters. So you're going to find Kamen Rider, Ultraman, American comics and movies, and Gundam robots. The fifth floor is General Bishoujo anime. Well, you'll probably find your Sailor Moon, your Card Captor Sakura, general titles, and games that are popular with women. The sixth floor 
is Bishojo Game and VTubers. So again, this will you'll find Love Life, Idol Master, virtual uh, YouTuber stuff, Azure Lane, Fate, stuff like that. The seventh floor is Bishojo Figures, which is illustrator, original, and adult characters. And the eighth floor is an event space. Now, looking at where the figure tower is going to be on the on this picture, I think I walked past it, but I wasn't sure. But I think it's cool. And since the grand opening is in three days, and for the first three days in operation, they'll be running a number of promotions. While supplies last, staff will be handing out Uchiwas, which are non-folding fans decorated with an illustration of Ami Ami's mascot character named Amiko, which is really cool. Now, the grand opening announcement doesn't specify what's on the schedule for the 8th floor event space, but it seems like it's a safe bet it'll host ex exhibitions of new figures and fan meetings for popular franchises. Now, those who go there and make purchases will receive an Amiko sticker while they have them. Now, for the big spenders, there will be a figure giveaway lottery. One ticket for every 5,000 yen, which translates to $31.25, which is probably $30 by now, that you spend, you can get a maximum of five per checkout. A total of 341 figures are being given away with the winner receiving them right there on the spot, which is great. And the thing is, the ticket is in English and Japanese, so it's even better so you know exactly what's going on. And in the very likely scenario that you find yourself headed home from the figure tower with a lot of full shopping bags, you'll happy know there is a, it is a two-minute walk from the Deng Dengi Kai Electric Town exit of the Jehar Akihabara Station, so you won't have to lug your new figures very far to get to the train home or back to your hotel. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up Google Maps and and find this location and see if I actually walked past it and be like yes I know exactly where this is and let's see did the map pull up the right direction looks like it did now I am here I'm looking at it uh, I'm I'm looking up and down the street here and it looks like I did not walk past this place. It was off in another direction from where I was. Okay. All right. Okay. At least I know to add this to my list. Yeah, I was going to say add it to the itinerary checkbox. Oh, that, that's, <laughs> the that's, a, that's, a, that's the plan. You know what? Actually, what I'm going to do after the show. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm looking at the map again, and I'm looking mm -hmm. like the street view. I have walked, I think I have walked past this before it was known as the figure tower. Ah. Uh. All right. But if I can get, if I can get it to do, if I can get into map mode and view up and down the map, I I know exactly. Oh, wait, am I doing, all right, there we, no. It took me to the, it took me to the train. No, I don't want to go to the train. I want to go to where, the map is. I want to see street level stuff. Oh well, enough about but that. But yeah, anyway, yeah, I was gonna say anyway. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. going to, if anybody is going to Japan in the next few years, because I know the cost has just made it so much more of a desirable trip for a lot of those of us who don't quite have that much spending money. Um, it's definitely a very good idea. Um, when I went in 2019, I actually mapped out um my locations to where I was staying. Like I mapped them out and mapped out how how like distant they were from each other and then i like gave myself variations of that so that like wherever i was in the city i could just be like oh well let me just go over here for 30 minutes or whatever and it was just convenient rather than kind of panicking and not really having a direction to go i'm i'm just a little anxiety being that's just how i'm programmed so i like to have plans mm -hmm. um but if that's not what you need that's totally cool i'm just talking generally to chat actually but what, uh well, actually what i plan to do is I'm going to create like an Excel spreadsheet and all the figurines mm -hmm. I come across, I'm going to mark down the figure, the store location, and try to tie it to the map so I know to go back there if I find it cheaper. So the figure, yeah. the price, and the location. Yeah, you could definitely do that. That's, that's and, my plan. Yeah. Because I told uh, CC Grey Witch that um, 
We're saving Akihabara for last, and I want to spend at least four days there. At well, least. if nothing else, I was going to say, if nothing else, if you don't want to have to risk it about carrying stuff back in your suitcase, just figure out the postal system oh, no, and no, just no, have no, the no, directions no, 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 for yourself. No, 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 we got it, we got it done better. So, unlike my, my ticket for last year, I had, I was able to put two carry-on luggages. I couldn't do that for that, for this one. We each have, we each allowed a personal and overhead and one large suitcase for carry on. So, yeah, that's a that's a good amount. Yep. So the end goal is based on what all that we buy, we're basically going to put all of the clothes in one suitcase and all the figures in another suitcase. That's a smart idea. No, that's actually a really good idea. I mean, you can use some of the clothing for padding them out, but yeah, that's, what that's I did. generally good practice. I, I, lay, I laid them out back and forth, and I like the fact that I had the check-in because what I plan to do is I will have my book bag underneath my seat for my, for my mm -hmm. personal. I have mm -hmm. my quote-unquote anime school bag for my check-in because I put a set of clothes in there so when I get to the hotel, I can change, shower and change. So yeah, I'm gonna put another bag in there, which I have somewhere in my in my suit in my luggage here. Just like a because, bag you can toss yeah, in. Yeah, yeah that yeah, bag yeah. will be like my travel bag. So I so my so like I said, the big suitcase, I will probably send it to the very to the hotel we're going to the second week while I have my normal bag with everything else. So when we get to mm -hmm. the, the second week. I can change that out, do laundry and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and as Washu Otaku says, I had one checked suitcase. I had another suit, another suitcase inside it. Going back from Japan, I had two checked suitcases. Yeah, you know. And the thing is, I said I'm going to probably have to pay fifty dollars for this checked bag. And when I got there, they're like, "Do you want to check that?" Oh, yeah. I didn't realize I had two checked bags on my ticket. You know. And pop culture says I need to go someday. Only been out of the country once, and that was Jamaica. Well, my friend, I I, I will tell you this: the tickets cost me and CC Grey Witch twenty five hundred, and that's pretty cheap. Only because we're not going until next year, which is really awesome. So if you can plan out like a year in advance, book your ticket then, and when you do. Send me a message. I will get you connected to the touring company that I went with, and I had a great time. Just expect to do a lot of walking. All right. I think that's enough for tonight. What do you think, uh, Barry? I agree. I agree. I think we've gotten through a lot of really great stories, and if you guys see anything interesting, you can definitely ping us in any of the communities we are in. Um, but yeah, generally, I'm going to get back to sewing. All right, it's, uh, it's time to queue up our outro. Mm -hmm. So if you like tonight's show, tell a friend. They in turn will another tell a friend, so on and so forth. We're independent bloggers, independent podcasters. So what we like and don't like, we're straight up telling you. So if you have any questions about the show, drop us a line at podcast at animejamsession.com. Again, that is podcast at animejamsession.com. We're here to believe you. Uh, check out our website at AnimeJamSession.com where you will find not just our weekly podcast, you will find an, uh, anime reviews, editorials, cosplay interviews, cosplay tips and tricks. You will find links to our Facebook and, yo, and YouTube pages of convention coverage and a lot more. Find it all at AnimeJamSession.com Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast if you like this show. You can find our podcast available on any app for, for podcasting, which is Anchor FM, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you name it, you can find it there. Follow us on our social media page. It's, uh Anime Jam Session on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow us on us so you know when we're going live, when we have new articles up, episodes, convention stuff, all that lot more. It's all Anime Jam Session on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And to everybody that follows us on those, thank you so much for being fans. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do the show without y'all. And don't forget the tip chart down below. If you're watching live, participating, down below is a link to our stream elements, our stream labs, and our Ko-Fi if you want to send us a few dollars. 
If you want to cheer us on with bits in the chat, you can go ahead and do that now. We really appreciate that. And also, subs to the channel. Uh, get, we love if you subscribe to the channel and give out gift subs as well. Every little bit goes a long way. So now we're going to go around the room. Last words, Barry. Well, all right, you lovely gamers and degenerates in our lovely community here on twitch.tv slash anime gem session. I hope you guys take care of yourselves. Stay safe and hydrated. It's been really hot out there, and I bid you adieu. I'm drinking up all this water in my, uh, oh, yeah. in my LTT Super uh, thermos. <laughs> my last words is, I'm hungry. I'm going to make mm. my dinner. And I got my fingers crossed. I get this apartment. I am hoping and I'm rooting. So we send you positive vibes, Ranma. Thank you. I appreciate it. That is it. End of list. We'll be back next week. Um, Mako should be back with us. We're gonna have a grand old time. So yeah. And Paco just says LTT has some great merch sales right now. It does, but I really can't afford to pull the trigger on stuff. And yes, the Amazon sale, the Prime Day sales are something. So yeah. So. We're out of here. So I'm Ronma. I'm Barry Mellon. Great fight. Great night. See you next week. All right. Bye. Say good night, Barry. Good night, Barry. Awesome. We're out of here. See you all next week. podcast has been a production of Anime Jam Session and AJS Productions. No fanboys and fangirls were hurt, maimed, shot, electrocuted, or pistol whipped in this episode. For now. The views, opinions, and thoughts expressioned on this show do not reflect the staff or the network as a whole. But we're still right, damn it. For transcripts of this episode, start typing. Check us out at AnimeJamSession.com and vognetwork.com for more information about us and other programming. Jamatane!